stop eating carbs and sugar. Those things feed these cancers and change your metabolism and change your cellular metabolism to precipitate cancers. Okay, that, that is borne out uh, by the data. And that is something that's been shown very conclusively in cell biology and cancer biology. Cancer takes in about 400 times the amount of glucose that other cells do. And this is a problem of uh, uh, respiration on the mitochondria. Welcome to the Plant Free MD Podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Uh, cadence, no disrespect, but I just can't wrap my head around vegetables being bad for us. Uh, having known cancer survivors save their life on raw food lifestyle. Can you please explain more in depth the plant poison? hundred uh, percent. That's a very good question and a very good point. You know, the thing is there, there is a difference between the standard American diet with a bunch of carbs and sugar and processed crap and a whole food, whatever diet, but you know, what a whole food plant diet, my, which plants, you know, there's 340,000 plants in the world. Most of them will kill you. Okay. You go out in the woods, you lose, you, uh, you know, run out of water, run, sorry, run out of food. Uh, you can't just eat any random plant. Most of them are very toxic. Um, so, you know, you know, most plants are inedible. You know, you really do need to know, uh, which plants are safe to eat, safe to eat as in they won't kill you right away. And you can get some nutrition on it. You can survive, but that doesn't mean that they don't have any toxins at all. So this is just how plants defend themselves. You know, plants and animals are in an evolutionary arms race. You know, plants becoming more and more poisonous, so less and less animals can eat them so they can survive and thrive. And animals becoming more and more adapted to specific poisons in specific plants so that they can eat that plant and safely process those poisons so that they can survive and thrive. I learned that in seventh grade biology, and I think that's not an uncommon thing to learn. And then in cancer biology, we learned this again, but from a cancer perspective, that these, these harmful toxins can cause cancer. And so, you know, and we know that they're abundant. There's 10,000, well, we know 1989 when we actually knew about far less uh, toxins uh, in these plants that at that time there were 10,000 times more uh, plant toxins uh, in you know plants like spinach and mushrooms uh, by weight than the pesticides we were spraying on them. And they were a thousand times more likely to cause cancer than the pesticides we were spraying on them. So you can help yourself again. You, I mean, you can, you can be on a ketogenic plant-based diet and cut out sugar and cut out carbs and really help yourself. Um, and when it comes to cancer, uh, but that doesn't mean that that's optimal. That doesn't mean that it's the best thing for you. Um, but to, you know, don't take my word for it. You know, you can go and take a look at, at, um, botany books, horticulture books. You know, this is just, this is, this is hard science. Like there are toxins in plants and we know them. We've categorized them and, and cataloged them. Like it's there, you know, you eat hemlock, you know, like that's what killed Socrates, right? That will cause a, a blockage of your GABA receptors so your body, your brain cannot slow down its, its neurons and you will die of seizures within two minutes. You know, that's what a plant toxin is. It is, it is trying to protect itself. Plants are living organisms. They want to stay living organisms. All living things down to single celled organisms have a defense. And while animals can run away or fight back, plants can't. And so one of their main deterrents is by being poisonous, saying, hey, you know, you eat me, I will hurt you. You better watch out. Um, for more of that, I go into a lot of detail in a, in a video that I, uh, you know, just very plainly named, plants are trying to kill you. So just take a look at that on my uh, YouTube channel and, um, and, and, and for more. And there's a lot more information there in the description as well. I have, uh, I have links to other, other things as well. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work, and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product, not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat only products the more meat only products that will be available in the mainstream so if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off which also applies to subscriptions giving you 25% off total all right thanks guys this guy says that uh, healthy people get cancer people eat good food good life still get cancer well it depends on what you define as, as good food because what people have been defining as good food has been a lot of low fat fruits and vegetables and grains. And that my friend is not good food. That is, that is just cancer on a plate, plain and simple. And if you uh, watch the 
video that I did with uh, Professor Thomas Seafried, uh, he'll show you that. I mean, this guy is this guy's a world expert in cancer biology, and he shows if you know understand the biology of cancer, you will understand uh, how this works, and it's very straightforward. Those foods are not good. Those foods cause cancer. Okay. Uh, so am I saying that sugar feeds cancer? Yes, I am. Uh, that was something uh, that um, uh, Professor Thomas Seafried, who's one of the top uh, cancer researchers and cancer biologists in the world uh, out of Boston College and Yale, uh, you know, shows quite conclusively. It has over 150 peer-reviewed studies and publications on the subject, and, and he shows that very clearly. We've known this since the 1930s from the work of Otto Warburg, who won the Nobel Prize in uh, medicine in 1930. He showed that, that, that uh, cancer um, takes in about 400 times the amount of glucose that other cells do, and this is a problem of uh, uh, respiration on the mitochondria. So if you aren't eating a bunch of carbohydrates, your mitochondria work better, they don't get damaged, and you're not feeding these cancer cells in the first place. So yeah, that's uh, very, very important. But yeah, if you guys want to... Um, uh, watch that. That's that's on my YouTube channel, just Anthony Chafee, MD, um, and that's um, Thomas Seyfried is the is the interview with that. And so, you know, check that out. Ovarian cancer. What are your thoughts on juicing plus keto carnivore uh, from New Zealand? Uh, well, you know, juicing meat sounds great, but um, you know, I know I would avoid I would avoid uh, plants in general. You know, th think about it this way. You know, if you if you juice a bunch of vegetables and you don't add any fruit or berries or sugar or anything like that, um, you know, then, you know, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to see exactly what this tastes like. And it is very bitter. It's like, it's like not palatable, you know, so that's why people add sugar to this stuff to cover up that just ab abhorrent taste of these, uh, of these plant toxins. But that's your brain telling you, Hey, there's things in there that are toxic. So you should really listen to that. There are a ton of carcinogens. In, in plants, all plants. You know, I learned that in cancer biology 22 years ago. And that's why, you know, I stopped eating plants completely. Okay. So I would not I'd touch any of those. The main thing is, is eating more meat, but also stop eating carbs and sugar. Those things feed these cancers and, and, and change your metabolism and change your cellular metabolism to precipitate cancers. Okay. That, that is borne out uh, by the data. And that is something that's been shown very conclusively in cell biology and cancer biology. So I would definitely avoid all, all carbohydrates and sugars. Um, if you, you know, want to have some vegetables as well, then, you know, that's your prerogative. But I think that the best thing you can do is eliminate all, uh, you know, harmful inflammation causing, uh, products, which uh, includes all plants and all fruit. So I would just go strict, strict carnivore if, if it were, if it were me and it is me and I do it. So, but you know, especially uh, in the case of cancer, that's, uh, I feel very strongly about that. Is coffee okay? Do you recommend cutting it out? Yeah, I would, I would, I would cut it out. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a plant at the end of the day, right? And so plants are going to have plant toxins. You know, I, I saw, I just saw a little TikTok thing where this guy was saying, um, it's like, oh, you want to go want to get uh, healthy and people say, oh, I'm going to cut out coffee. Whoa, not so fast. There's this observational study that said that you have these benefits observational study what kind of nonsense is that you know that that's that you're you're basing like the health of your existence on an observational study maybe maybe not not uh the best thing to do i mean that's very low level evidence you know maybe it's true it could be you know i mean there, there have been observational studies that were you know borne out um and and ended up being true but it's very low level evidence so you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you know you know change your practice and you know based on that i don't know what are some hard facts well, hard facts are that, you know, in, in botany and and uh, in horticulture, we know that there are certain poisons in there that that plant makes to deter insects and animals from eating them, you know, especially in the bean, right? Because a bean is a seed, right? All organisms protect their babies more than anything by and large. And a seed is a plant's baby. A bean is a seed. A grain is a seed. A nut is a seed. And so this is where you generally find the highest concentration of poison is in, is in the seed. Okay. And so, so coffee bean is, is no different, you know, you know, cocoa is uh, cacao is, is no different as well. It's like, it kills dogs. Chocolate kills dogs. It's because it's poison. Okay. And it's, that's why it's bitter as hell because that bitter taste is your brain and tongue recognizing harmful chemicals saying, don't eat this. This is bad for you. Spit it out. Right. And so 
that's uh, that that's what that is. And you know, coffee, coffee's bean. You know, you know, I, I mean, you know, uh, caffeine itself is is just a neurotoxin. You know, I, I've, I've uh, spoken to people who have you know, intractable epilepsy uh, who've cured it on a carnivore diet and a keto diet. And we've been doing this for 100 years, actually. It's, in, it's in, been used in the liter- uh, been used as a treatment modality for intractable epilepsy for literally, uh, you know, 90 years. Uh, it's still used at Johns Hopkins, okay? Um, I, I, I spoke to people that, that you know, uh, got rid of most of their um, uh, seizures, from uh, going keto and got rid of all of them on carnivore. Had one cup of coffee, bam, seizure. Okay, so he was thinking it's like, yeah, co- you know, caffeine is a neurotoxin. So yeah, I just avoid that stuff. You know, I I had one cup of black coffee um, after you know, sort of a couple of days after like a heavy workout. I was sore for two days. I don't get sore. I don't get sore normally. It doesn't matter how much I work out. It doesn't matter how hard I push myself. I, you know, I'll get sore uh, with one cup of black coffee. I'll sore for two days. Okay. So obviously there are things in there that are harmful. Um, and everyone I speak to that uh, gets off coffee, they all, you'll say that they're, they're really happy uh, with that. Hey everyone, if you need a little extra help getting started on a carnivore diet and my online resources that I have for free aren't enough for you, you can go to www.howtocarnivore.com and sign up for a 30 day carnivore challenge where you'll have online resources, group support, weekly Zoom meetings, as well as the ability to chat live with myself, Simon Lewis, and the others in the challenge who can help you and support you and give you extra advice and help you along the way. So if that sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, then please go to howtocarnivore.com and sign up. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you there.